Have you ever had to document the operation steps of a complex machining process? If so, you know the modeling challenges that go along with it. Especially if your customer hands you a step file and all you have is a featureless solid model to work with. Today, I'm going to take a featureless solid model of a fully machined casting and bring it back to its as-cast condition. There's four main steps. First, this is a high precision machining operation, so we're going to remove the coating from the model. Second, we're going to remove the machined features. Third, we'll add in some as cast material that typically gets machined away to create a nice flat mating surface. And fourth, we're going to have to manually create some patches using SolidWorks surfacing tools. Stick with me as I show you the technique to document the machine steps of this operation. Here is what the part will look like when complete. We'll use SolidWorks to remove the 2000 hardco anodized from the aluminum casting. I will start the process by opening the supplied step file. I have the 3D interconnect option turned on. This creates a link to the step file. Because we are going to be manipulating the geometry, I will break the link to run import diagnostics. Import diagnostics is always recommended to remove any questionable geometry. There are a number of faces here that require repair and once completed we have a nice clean part. The process of removing the coating is three simple steps. Duplicate the body, shell the duplicate body, and subtract it from the original. To duplicate the body we'll use the move copy body command making sure that the copy option is selected and leaving zero for all the dimensions. That will copy the body in the exact same location. Next we will shell the duplicate to the two thousandths of an inch coating thickness. Our part is completely coated when completed so we will specify no faces in the shell. We will only specify which body the shell is applied to. If you had some faces that were machined after coating you can specify them in the shell to leave them where they are. Combined feature will subtract the coating body from the main body to bring us back to pre-plate dimensions. With the coating removed, the next task is to remove machined features. We'll do this in the reverse order they would actually be machined. The feature we'll use here is delete face and we'll start with some simple blind holes on the front of the part. Delete and patch is the option that will give us the cleanest geometry. This works great for these holes as long as we select the bore and the end face of the hole and don't leave any orphaned faces in the hole. The result is nice solid geometry. Later in the video I'll use the delete option and create some manual surface patches but use delete and patch if possible for speed. Delete and patch works in many situations, even when the end faces of the hole are not planar or the holes are through holes. As you can see in this section view, this part has some complex through holes with undercuts to allow for O-rings. The hole on the left hand side of the part would be capped by a compound curvature face left over from the raw casting. Both situations can be handled with the delete and patch option. In this situation, we want to make sure to leave no orphaned faces in the middle and select all the faces associated with that O-ring groove. Once this is done, SolidWorks will fill these in nicely. Not all holes should be filled in completely. This large hole on the right side of the part would be cast in to a smaller diameter leaving some extra material to machine away. To get back to the raw casting is a three-step process. Delete face, move face, and draft. The delete face with the delete and patch option leaves us a straight cylindrical hole. We can add the as-cast material with a move face where we'll add in an extra 90 thousandths of material. To finish the operation, adding a draft with a simple neutral plane draft option and three degrees will bring us back to our as-cast condition. Delete face can also be employed to remove machined features on a face such as this groove for a seal 
Where we don't want to remove a hole, we just want to bring it back to its original sharp edge. Next we'll address the large faces, where some excess as cast material would be removed to create nice mating surfaces. We'll use the move face command to add 90 thousandths material to bring us back to our as cast. Let's attempt to do the same to the back faces of this part. When we add the first three faces to the move face command, SolidWorks shows us the preview. That indicates it can calculate the feature. However, when the fourth face is added, the preview goes away. Let's remove that face from the selection and investigate it on its own. We are going to employ surface features to create the extra material manually. So first we'll take the large flat face and use offset surface to give us a face 90 thousandths above the existing face. Then we'll use delete face with the delete option to remove the original and degenerate our model into a surface model. Using the extend surface, we'll extend the existing faces to meet that new 90 thousandths offset face. Adding faces into the selection box, SolidWorks continues to show us a preview. However, if we examine that preview, there are a couple of blemishes associated with the small sliver faces. In one instance, there is a gap, and in two other instances, there is a darker shading to the preview, almost as if the surface were going to be wrinkled when it was created. Those blemishes are the reason why the move face command failed. These faces cannot be extended upwards, most likely due to how they were created in the original authoring CAD tool. Before we patch the holes, we'll trim and knit the newly extended faces to the 90 thousandths offset face. We'll use the mutual trim option so we end up with a single surface body to make the patching a little bit easier. There are many ways to create these small patches. We'll use the filled surface command here, but boundary or lofted surfaces would work as well. Once we have selected all of the bounding edges, SolidWorks previews the patch for us. The second patch has an odd shaped edge, and in some instances, cleaning up the boundary prior to the patch results in a cleaner patch but in this instance we can use the existing edges. To get back to a solid body, we'll use the knit command to knit all three bodies together. In this command, there is an option for create solid. That will save us a step in the future, so we'll turn it on here. We now have our ASCAST model and a feature tree full of machined features. All that remains is to configure the model to match our operation steps. For easy visualization, I'll make some folders in my feature tree to match my configuration needs. I won't go through the configuration work here in this video, but with minimal effort, the model now has configurations to match each operation step in the machining process. This would allow us to create matching drawing views for each operation step. Thank you for sticking with me to learn about these direct editing techniques to help with the process plan to machine this casting. I hope you found some useful tips to help you in your design and be sure to check out other videos from our CATI channel. Thank you.